So uh, let me remind you of what Feynman diagram represents. The Feynman diagrams, they represent the interactions. And we actually talked about um, what's called QED, or quantum electrodynamic diagrams already. So but, but as a reminder, um, Feynman diagrams for QED. So I guess uh, when, I, when someone says QED versus ENM, the distinction is QED is explicitly quantum mechanical. ENM, you wonder, you know, is it classical electromagnetism or quantum mechanical electromagnetism? Is it relativistic electromagnetism? So QED, or quantum electrodynamics, is explicitly relativistic, uh, sorry, quantum mechanical description of electromagnetic phenomena that's uh, relativistic. So, um, so in QED, what you are looking at is interaction of a charged particle with electromagnetic fields or photon. So QED elementary vertex is actually pretty simple. It's a charged particle comes in. It doesn't, uh, you know, it's actually charged particle comes in. It doesn't have to be fermion. It could be, um, it could be anything. Actually, how do I want to draw it? Uh, I guess the way I was going to draw it was, I was going to draw it like this. Charged particle comes in, goes out, and it changed the direction because it got hit by a photon. Um, but really, the thing is, you can take this, turn it in any direction. So this is um, describing how a charged particle is changing direction because it absorbs the photon. But you could draw this. You could draw a photon coming in that produces a particle and antiparticle. Particle goes out this way, and antiparticle goes out this way. And it's an indicated as an antiparticle by arrow going backward in time. Um, now, sometimes people put bar here to indicate it's antiparticle. Some authors don't like this because it's like a double negative. Is it anti-antiparticle, or is it just antiparticle? But I don't know. For me, double negative means negative. It's an emphasized negative. <laughs> And, or you could do, uh, you could, so this is a pair production, kind of, or you can do, um, or you can do a pair annihilation. You could have a particle coming in, antiparticle coming in, and they annihilate to produce a photon. But I guess the, what I want to emphasize is that all these three elementary diagrams are one and the same thing. They are not really different. It's a, imagine it like a Lego piece. You can take it, turn it around, um, in a very rudimentary sense. You, um, so I guess if you're being more sophisticated, it, uh, it does represent the different dynamics. Now, I don't know if uh, many of you remember, this elementary vertex actually, so for example, um, this idea of pair production, um, this actually does not happen. Right? Um, there's no way to conserve energy and momentum at this um, um, uh, energy. You could never have a single photon turning into electron and positron and have total energy and momentum be conserved in that interaction. This is how you can analyze it. Imagine a single gamma ray photon. You just go to the reference frame where it's, the gamma ray photon is red shifted so that it's no longer gamma ray. Maybe it's a radio, a radio wave. So you can find the reference frame where your photon no longer has enough energy to split into electron and positron. And if that's possible at any frame, then that means, you know, if something is impossible in any one reference frame, it's impossible in any other reference frame. Okay? So real pair production doesn't happen like this. Real pair production happens with the two photons. So this is an example of what, so what these are, this is the, what we call elementary vertex. And it does, uh, these do represent something in the actual calculation. These are first order perturbation calculations. It turns out all the processes you, you look at end up being second order perturbation calculation. So they always involve two vertexes or more. So something, the real version of this, where you have, um, where you have two charges going out, one, let's say, elect, well, let's say one electron and a positron. 
So you would have to start the process with two photons. So that there's a reference frame where two photons are colliding head on. And however much energy they have is however much energy will go into electron and positron. So you have one photon coming in, another photon coming in. Oh, I'm pretty sure I drew this wrong. So okay, I cannot join this here because there's no elementary vertex that joins two photons together. So what I would need to do is, okay, I, let me, okay. Um, so photon here, here. Okay, so there's a vertex that joins this uh, charge with this photon. And there's another vertex here that joins this photon with this charge here. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't quite planned this out right. And in between these two, they are joined with a virtual um, particle, a virtual electron. And I guess for the sense of this direction, it really has to go in this direction. Okay. So this is a, di <laughs> let me redraw it so that it's a little bit prettier. <laughs> um, so all the processes that you might imagine in electrodynamics can be represented we do these uh, Feynman diagrams. So this represents what we call pair production. And pair annihilation would be just take this diagram, flip it around horizontally, then you have electron and positron coming in, turning into two photons. So that's pair production, pair, pair annihilation. Um, I think we did the Compton scattering last time, right? Yes, yeah, so there's Compton scattering. Um, so yeah, so that's the QED diagram, fairly simple. And it's fairly simple because you only have one elementary vertex. So any kind of, oh, oh so I can give you an example. So um, when we're talking about mesons, oh, it's still here, rarity. Um, so neutral pion decays into two photons. So okay, we have to talk about the quark content of the pi meson. And what I, can, what I should tell you now is that pi mesons are made up of one quark and an anti-quark. And what can go into these rules for the pi meson are the up and down quarks. So for the neutral pi meson, it's going to be up and anti-up or down and anti-down. It's actually some linear combination of these. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> um, um, if you have different combination of up and down quarks, as in if you have up and, I don't know, anti-down, then uh, is this going to be positively charged or negatively charged? Positive, right? Plus two thirds, minus of minus one third, so plus one third. So this will end up with a Q of plus one. Or if you have down quark and an anti-up quark, which is actually antiparticle version of this. Um, this will lead to Q equals minus one. So this is what pi plus is, and this is what pi minus is. Okay. So the purpose of our drawings for this neutral pi on, let's say it's made up of up and anti-up quark. Then um, this decay, what it is, is it's a, um, it's a pair annihilation. So you have a, an up quark coming in, um, anti-up quark also coming in. So up, anti-up, and join them like this. <laughs> um, up quark emits a photon, real photon, turns it into virtual up quark. That doesn't have the same mass that real up quark would have. Um, it also emits a photon again, and the virtual up quark, oh, oh, sorry, it doesn't turn into, and sorry, the time sense is a little bit reversed. But this is the Feynman diagram that illustrates the decay process of neutral pi on into two photons. Yeah. So that's the basic principle. You can kind of play around with it. Although I can't really assign homework assignments on this because my open math can't do it. So I don't know if I can actually give it to you on the exam question. Uh, how come we know the direction of the virtual particle? It's because the fermions um, have this. So these arrows have nothing to do with the direction of time. Yeah, but uh, how can we know we choose this way to draw the arrow? 
uh, yeah, so this arrow only indicates is it particle or antiparticle. So this is particle coming in. This is antiparticle coming in. Yeah, so here, I'm drawing the arrows just to show that at this vertex, you have a particle line coming in and particle line going out. But it doesn't, it's not a virtual particle. Whether it, this particle doesn't actually exist. It's a calculational scheme. Yeah. Yeah, but this arrow, there's an unambiguous direction there. Now, if it's a photon, then there's no unambiguous direction for photon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess whether you interpret this as a particle or antiparticle, that is ambiguous. Because if something is antiparticle, only if the direction of this arrow is going opposite to the direction of time. Here, no direction of time, so you don't know, is it particle or antiparticle? I don't know and I don't care. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, but this is the basic idea of Feynman diagram that any reaction you have that involves electromagnetism, QED, quantum electrodynamics, it can be drawn with this very basic Lego block. 